Hey guys, we're in Wales. Yeah, this is the ones the watch uh, video with Two Cents Rugby. Uh, first of all, how are you doing? Tim, bro, I'm going good. I'm going good. I'm busy. There's a lot of rugby to talk about, but it's not really something you can complain about. Um, just with so much going on, it's pretty much the best time to be a rugby fan. My sleep schedule is not great. <laughs> After we chat, I am probably going to go take a bit of a, a midday nap, but um, yep. yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, no, I, I, I respect that. I respect that. But um, yeah, no, again, like, like, like I said already, we'll be giving you guys a once to watch video here, really around Rugby World Cup in terms of players we believe could stand out up in this Rugby World Cup. Um, again, the criteria we had really was just to select one player from each of the groups. So from pool, from pool A, B, C, and D. That's the only criteria we had. We don't know who you know we've selected from each other. So it's really just me a surprise in the spot. So hope you guys enjoy. And again, subscribe toward uh, like and comment and definitely subscribe. And I'll leave a link in, in the comments below for the two cents rugby, of course. But um, besides that, let's get straight into this. So first of all, who have you gone with in terms of pool A as your ones to watch player? Well, we were just talking off air about how neither of us really wanted to go with like the ultimately obvious picks, yeah. right? So like pool A, you know, Antoine Dupont, Will Jordan, like, you know, all the, the big name players we've kind of, I think both of us, even though I don't know who you're going to pick, yeah. <laughs> have steered away from that a little bit. Um, to, uh, the guy I've gone with is from Italy, who are... Uh, okay. A long shot to get out of their pool, to put it mildly. I mean, they've never beaten the All Blacks and they've got France away from home. So they're really up against it. But one guy I really like from Italy is one of their loose forwards, Sebastian Negri. He is okay. a vicious, vicious tackler. He is brutal. Uh, he doesn't seem to, I don't know, have any regard for his own well-being when he puts himself on the line, which is something which you want from your loose forwards. He's got a great work rate. He's always one of their top tacklers. He's always pretty good at getting over the advantage line. And it's actually one area where the Italians are starting to get pretty stacked, like Lamaro, their captain. Um, you know, he's a regular kind of tackle machine. They've got um, Lorenzo Canone, who's a great guy at number eight. But Negri is kind of one of the old guard guys that seems to have retained his spot. And I think that's for a reason. So even if Italy aren't going to get out of their pool in all likelihood, barring a miracle, which, you know, it's sports, it could happen. Yeah, it could happen. But yeah. I, I still think that guy is going to put in some big shifts uh, for the Italians, even if he's not a guy that's going to be like, you know, player of the match. He's probably not going to get any headlines kind of thing. But um, I still think he's, you know, one that we as fans need to kind of appreciate for the role he does for Italy. Yeah. No, I like the pick. I like the pick a lot. I mean, you know, obviously he has a lot of experience under his belt anyway. So, yeah, I like the pick that. But, um, yeah, in terms of the ones watch player I've gone with, again, I'd probably say out of the whole list I've actually gone with, this is probably the most notable player and I've actually selected from the All Blacks, but I believe this player, you know, he's kind of coming to his own now. And he was recently selected in terms of the All Blacks. And I've gone with Mark Talea. I think Mark Talea is the guy to kind of look out for in terms of this All Black squad. Because, again, he's one of the really, I'd say it's one of the only positions where it's still up for de debate, really, in terms of that 11 jersey. Because, of course, you do have the likes of Lesa Fananku there. You, are, you have the likes of Kevin Clark. But I believe Mark Talea is probably the guy they're going to go with in terms of that starting 15 in that 11 jersey. And I think he's just, he, I mean, when you look back into Super Rugby, he is just one of the most elusive, you know, man. <laughs> like, literally, he just slides past players like Mavis. He can twist players around. You know, he, he just, he could do anything. Like, he, he, he I, we even saw that in that uh, Bok game where you know, at points he was just able to kind of just do a little bit of a jump and just go past players. So, now that's what I love about him. And I think he definitely has the ability to do that within the World Cup. So, that's the reason why I come with him as my once watch player in terms of pool A. But um, yeah, he's, he's yeah. a genuine game breaker, that guy. He doesn't maybe necessarily kind of have that slippery eel thing that Will Jordan has, but he's got some pure power. Oh, uh, yeah. In this game, he busts tackles like mad. So, nah, it's a, I'm a Blues fan. So, I'll. Yeah, I'll exactly. Exactly. I, I do think like his strength is underrated as well because he's definitely more of a powerful runner than what, what sure. most people expect, actually. So, yeah, he definitely yeah. has that game to him as well. All right. Why don't you lead the way with Paul B, just in case? Yeah, of course. Uh, um, yeah, with Paul B, again, this is – it's a tough pick, but I've gone actually with a bit of recency bias here in this one. Yeah. And I've gone with a Bok, but with this mm -hmm. one, I've actually gone with Caden Moody. And mm -hmm. I, I've gone with Katie Moody just because I thought he was outstanding against the All Blacks in Twickenham. And again, it was the first time he ever played at 13 for the box. And I think he just, 
he showed he definitely has the ability to do that. I mean, it was really kind of a debate, really, between, you know, it was a whole argument if you can kind of outclass, you know, Reiko in terms of that position because, mm -hmm. you know, the box are kind of utilizing him now as that 13. And it's kind of the same transition what Reiko had to do from, you know, the left, well, really from a winger position towards that 13. And, you know, Caden is that the dude is pretty much done the exact same thing and he's he's pulled it off so i think he has the ability to kind of do that within the rep world cup and i think he's someone that the box may utilize in that position because again the only player he's in my opinion he's really competing against in that position is jesse clear and i think for what we saw against the all blacks i just think he he just adds a different kind of element to the game you know it's more like x factor in the sense where he can slide past players. You know, he's pretty good at actually stealing the ball as well. But um, yeah, I just think he, he's a really cool player to watch out for. And he has a ton of speed under his belt. So um, yeah, that's what gets me excited about him. Interesting pick because I've also gone with a Bok. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and uh, you actually mentioned him. I went with Jesse Creel. Jesse Whoa, Creel okay. in the midfield. Um, like, like different different player from Kane and Moody. Absolutely. Like, um, And I find this... Like the reason I picked Jesse Creel is because he's a guy who over this pretty much entire World Cup cycle has been given like a fair bit of stick from South African fans. South African fans can be pretty harsh on their own players if they don't <laughs> yes. feel like they're living up to standards. And it doesn't help that Lukanyo Arm has been one of the world's best oh, 13s, yeah. you know, for a number of years now. So anytime Lukanyo wasn't playing, Jesse Creel steps in and it's like, bro, you're not Lukanyo Arm. Yeah, and exactly. that was pretty obvious on display, but in 2023, I feel like he's playing some of his best rugby. He's not maybe as quick as he is getting on compared to like Kane and Moody. He's not quite as quick as Moody. I don't know if we've seen Moody tested defensively yeah. uh, that much at 13. Um, he's only going to get better the more he practices. But um, yeah, Jesse Creel, I thought it's been really solid defensively. Mm -hmm. He's shown a good turn of pace enough. Like he's not Rico or Kane and Moody level, but he scored a good try against Wales the other day. Yeah. Um, showed a good bit of power to fend, passes the ball, which is something he's been a little bit guilty of being a bit of a ball hog. You know, if you're going to play 13, you need to be able to distribute as well. So, yeah, I think if they go with Moody or if they go with Creel, I think the box right now, in the absence of Lacanio Arm, it doesn't quite seem as bad as what it did when, um, you know, the idea of Lacanio Arm being injured, which is what's happened, uh, you know, would have been discussed before because before it was like Lacanio Arm and then it, you're falling off a cliff to the next guy. <laughs> Exactly. I, 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 don't, exactly. I don't think they're in that position anymore. No, a lot to pick. A lot to pick. And, and the crazy thing is that when I look back even at Jesse Curl's career, I mean, he first started at a, as a 15. So Colbert, he's yeah. made that transition really, again, I'm not saying it's like Kaden Moody because he's started mm. kind of as a wing and then but now you looking to use him as a center. But, you know, he was first as a 15 really, I mean, back in the day. And then now, you know, he's kind of seen as a 13. So it's interesting mm. to see kind of because we both picked, you know, kind of the 13 um, in terms yeah, of who right. the alternate go with. So it's fascinating to see because only technically only one of us may be right in that call in terms of who may stand out um, from a ball perspective. But mm. um, yeah, well, then move on then towards, I guess, pool C in terms of the ones watch players. Uh, I'll give you, of course, your go first. Who do you believe is the ones watch player? Uh, I went with a Ford and he's maybe a little bit less kind of left field now and that he actually like in the game this morning which i just watched between australia and france the commentary team that i was listening to was giving him a lot of praise and that's gus bell the loose head prop for the wallabies Ooh, good shot um he has been just in devastating form since he returned from injury this year mm -hmm. uh for for the wallabies like they've got a bit of a propping crisis with with multiple injuries, but right now, and I think they showed it in today's game against France with the, the Wallabies scrum actually got on top. Tupo and Bell can do some serious damage. And we've always known that Bell around the park is really high energy, really high work rate. He gets heaps of meters. He busts tackles. He gets tackles of his own, which for a prop is kind of like, that's the bonus stuff. Ultimately, you want him to yeah. be there, you know, scrummaging. But yeah, the fact that they, they gave the French scrum a pretty good go both of them played, I think, an hour plus. I think he could do really well. But as I said, the commentary team twice mentioned uh, Gus Bell out by name about how good he's been this year. So maybe he is starting to get the love that he deserves. But I always feel like props don't get quite the same praise as the wingers and the yeah, teams. Yeah, I agree. So I wanted yeah. to pick a prop, and Gus Bell's my guy. 
Do do you see him just quickly being maybe the starter for the Wallabies in terms of I guess yeah. that front that front row? So. Or do I you mean, think... it was Hooper initially, right when they named yeah. him co-captain with Hooper, but Eddie's priority or like picking order list is is changing pretty quickly. So at the oh, moment, yeah. I think it's Bell. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But um, yeah, I guess in terms of my selection here, I, I've actually gone with a Fijian here. And I've actually mm-hmm. gone with the likes of Frank Lamani because I've been, I've been mm-hmm. really impressed by him, um, really from a club perspective in terms of Fiji Dura, but also just how he's been able to kind of translate um, or just transfer that rugby into the into the national team. And I think he's been just outstanding this year because, again, what he does for the Fiji Dura side is that he they really play off him so much in terms of it's, – it's similar to what we see with the All Blacks, really, with how they play off like Aaron Smith so much and utilize him in terms of his passing. And I think Frank Lamani is kind of – is kind of that player really for the Fijians. And I mean, again, we saw, you know, Fiji with that historic win against England. And I just think, you know, he was again um, good in that game. He's he's very consistent in terms of what he brings towards the Fijians. And I think he, he just has an eye eye for that try line. And it's something that we've seen, you know, kind of a lot this year um, within 2023. So I think he's definitely someone to look out for because he reminds, in a way, I'm not saying it's a complete comparison, but he reminds me of kind of like the Will Genya-esque kind of player and where he likes to snipe between the lines and find that kind of try line. So, um, yeah, I just think he's a player to look out for in terms of that Fijian squad because, again, you normally go for maybe one of their wingers or maybe, you know, just Semi Radrada because he's just, you know, sensational. But I think he's just someone I wanted to mention because I think he's just been, a, you know, really consistent throughout the year and I think he can kind of carry that on within the Rock World Cup. But, um, yeah, I guess um, – We'll move on then towards, I guess, the last player, um, really just in terms of uh, Group D. And mm-hmm. again, I'll, I'll go with my one here first. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, well, this is a tough one because there's actually a lot of good teams in this, uh, in this pool. So you, you have a good mm-hmm. you know, kind of um, selection here in terms of the players you're going to go with. But I've actually looked towards the uh, Pumas in this instance. And I've actually gone with Juan Martin Gonzalez. I think he's someone to kind of look out for because, you know, we saw last year within the rugby championship, you know, he really just, he was kind of like seen as the breakout player in terms of yeah. what he brought towards, you know, the Pumas. And, you know, that, I mean, that try he scored against the All Blacks, like was just, it was just incredible because, you know, he got for the line out, he just runs down the side and just scores. And he's like, Whoa, like that's it. That's yeah. it. I did that. But um, no, I just think he, he can bring that energy once more towards the Pumas side within this uh, World Cup. And again, you have to remember that, in that loose forward pack, they have a brilliant loose forward pack with the likes of Pablo Matera as well as Marcus Kramer. But I think out of the three, he's the one that's kind of like, you know, kind of um, just not talked about as much compared to the other two. So I think he's just someone I want to sh- shed a light on because I think he just brings, he, in my opinion, he's like the X factor of that loose forward trio because he he can do, he can play really all three of those positions and he's just, he's just quality. He's just quality. So I'm really excited to see what he can do obviously in this World Cup and, yeah, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised at all if he gets a try for himself as well. But uh, he's a great uh, lineout operator as well. Oh actually. yeah, brilliant, so, brilliant. Yeah, he's um, he's really Mr. Versatile. Interestingly, I have also gone with a Puma. I'm not oh, sure I like it. I like it. A little bit of a bias from from either of us that neither of us <laughs> went with with England. But um, for for the Pumas, I went with their halfback Gonzalo Bertrand Ooh, because. Good job. I know Kubeli is kind of coming back from injury, but I feel like every good performance we've seen in recent times where they've really upped a gear, I feel like Gonzalo Bertrino has been a part of that. He helps drive their pack forward. He can snipe as well, like you mentioned, with Lamani for Fiji. Uh, I think he's gotten at least one try this year when he was just you know, yeah. putting the, the defensive under, uh, defense under pressure around the fringes. He's got a pretty solid kicking game. Uh, and then when he's not played, I feel like they go down just that one level from when mm-hmm. Bertrano is there at the moment. So uh, I do feel like he's going to be their leading candidate. I mean, as I said, Kubali's back. They could go with the extra bit of experience, but I feel like, nah, I feel like it's going to be uh, Bertrano. And I feel like if he's in, in good form, him and Carreras together, uh, I think if they can kind of help... <laughs> Unlock some of that potential in the Pumas backline, then um, yeah, then they could be a threat at the World Cup because I still feel like they've just been a little bit with their attack. It's not quite hit 100 percent yet, but mm-hmm. if they can peak just at the World Cup, who knows? Hey, I mean, I mean, at the moment, I I already I even say they're kind of like favorites, maybe be top that group at the moment. You know, with mm-hmm. you know, England's form not being the best, Japan's right. form also not being the best, and right. Smoke could pull off an upset. You you never know. So. 
I think at the moment, I don't know, the, the Pumas are looking good, but uh, we'll have to wait and see, of course. But um, yeah, besides that, guys, that is our kind of ones watch players for this Rugby World Cup. Let us know in the comments what you guys think. Do you guys think, do you guys agree with us? Or do you think there's other players that really you believe could kind of stand out within this Rugby World Cup? Let us know, obviously, in the comments. Like the video, guys. Subscribe. Check out Two Cents Rugby. I'll leave a link in the descriptions. And beside that, I'll see you guys next time. Just him. Hey, Bill, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a stick up. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker. Bill, I'm in the mood for a change up. I leave the city and return with my change up.